Hello, I'm Dr. Asanto Heath, and I'm here once again with an amazing topic as usual. What is a cohort study? What is a cohort study? If you are new to research and you have no idea about what cohort study is and you are tired of reading about it and you still cannot understand, then this video is for you. So what is a cohort study? In order to understand what cohort studies are, we need to understand the study design pyramid. We need to understand observational studies. We need to understand what study designs are. So let's begin with the basics first. In the research world, we have different kinds of study designs. By study designs, in easy words, in easy language, I mean the types of studies. For example, you may have heard the name clinical trials. Those are the experiments. They are one study design. Similarly, animal studies. We know animal studies, right? We use animal in studies. They are also study designs. We design the studies, the animal study, or by bringing the animals and moving forward by giving them the medication or whatever the experiment is all about. So that is a study design. In vitro studies are also study designs. Case reports, case studies, they are study designs, case series, and then observational studies. So they all are study designs. So I would like you to remember this so that you are not confused about the word study design. Study design is the way we design our study or the way we design our experiment. The, the step-by-step -step plan of each study. That is the study design. Study design pyramid is designed by the experts in research world, and they have given us all possible kinds of study designs in one pyramid. So at the bottom of this pyramid, we have in vitro studies, then comes the animal studies, then ideas, opinions, and editorials. And then the next thing is the case reports and case series, and then comes the observational studies. And observational studies are of three types. Cross-sectional studies, case control studies, and cohort study. And after these three observational studies, the next thing is the clinical trials. And clinical trials are of two types, randomized control trials and non-randomized control trials. And the top of the pyramid, the tip of the pyramid is the strongest research evidence, systematic reviews, and meta-analysis. So at the pyramid, the lowest and the, the studies that are at the bottom are in vitro studies. And the studies at the top are the systematic reviews and meta-analysis. And systematic reviews and meta-analysis are the strongest research evidence, while the studies at the bottom are the weakest evidence. Now let's talk about the observational studies. So what are observational studies? Now we are talking about the observational studies so that we can talk about cohort studies. So observational studies are those kind of kind of studies in which the researcher, let's say you are a researcher, you just observe the participants. You don't do anything except just observing your participants, observing their records. You don't give them any intervention. You don't give them any medication. You don't instruct them to do certain tasks and look at the behavior of that intervention. So you do not manipulate the environment. In experiment that is known as clinical trial or that is also known as interventional study, you give an intervention, you give a medication, you give something to the patient and you look at the after effects of that intervention. But in observational studies, we don't. And cohort studies are among the observational studies. And actually, according to the study design pyramid, it is on the top of the pyramid in observational studies. Of course, there's clinical trial on top of the cohort studies as well. I'm talking about the observational studies only. That the sequence is like this. At the bottom is the cross-sectional studies, then comes the case control studies, and then comes the cohort studies. First of all, what is cohort? Cohort is a group of people is a big population with similar characteristics, with similar properties, similar characteristics. Maybe they all are smokers. Maybe they all live in a particular location. They all live in a particular country, whatever. But they are a population with similar characteristics. So we include those kinds of people in a study. Now, what do we see in an observational study like this? We are observing, right? So what do we see? We actually are trying to understand the risk factor. So we choose a population that has some kind of risk factor. For example, this, just for the sake of discussion, let's say a city of San, you're looking at city of San Francisco and you're looking at people 
living in San Francisco, pollution, how that can affect their health in the future. So what you will do is you will follow that population later and later and later. You will keep following them up. So actually in cohort studies, you go into the future. Yes, you follow up that population that you have selected with similar properties, with similar characteristics, and you follow them up in the future. Now, remember, we always have two groups most of the time. I won't say always, but I would say most of the time we have two groups. We have two groups of cohort. One is the exposed group that they are exposed to a risk factor. And the other group is that is not exposed to the risk factor that you are studying. Now we will follow them up. We will look at their future. We will meet them up next year, probably two years down the line, maybe four years down the line. We will maybe six years and 10 years down the line. And how long these studies can last? These studies can last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, even 50 years. There is a study like uh, Firmingham Heart Study that started in 1948 and the study is still going on with three generations. With such a huge population of cohort, the study has not ended yet. So this is what a cohort study is. It's a long study. It is a study of risk factor. You're studying risk factor. You have two groups, risk factor group and the non-exposed group. So we will say exposed group and not exposed group. And we follow these both groups in the future. And we will look at them next, next year. Or let's say we selected a population that, that has a risk factor that they're living in an area where there is poisonous water. Now we will follow them up next year, five years down the line, 10 years, and we'll see what happened to those people who were exposed and what happened to those who were not exposed in the same locality, for example. Then we can say that, okay, yes, there is a possibility that this risk factor is associated with this disease. Let's say these people develop skin cancer or they develop some kind of skin problem or they develop some kind of ulcers in the mouth, for example. Now you can say that that poisonous water is somehow related with mouth ulcers or skin problems or skin cancer. So cohort study actually told us the future that yes, this is a risk factor. This water, poisonous water, this chemical is associated with skin cancer. This is how we do cohort study and cohort study tells us the association of a risk factor with a problem. And we look at both population. So actually in a cohort study, we are studying cause and effect. Yes, we are looking at the cause and effect. So there are certain benefits of doing cohort studies. The benefit is that we, we know the risk factor. We learn about the risk factor and we don't have to do a clinical trial to look at the risk factor. And by the way, cohort studies are actually done when you don't want to do clinical trial. Now, this is very strange for you, right? So let me explain. Let's say you want to check the effects of smoking on certain people. You cannot give them cigarette to smoke. So you cannot do a clinical trial because it's unethical. You can harm them. A researcher cannot harm people. So you have to do a cohort study. So that's why cohort study is a savior that you still can study a risk factor without giving any risk factor, without giving any intervention. You are not doing anything unethical. You are just choosing those people who are already exposed to certain risk. And then you follow them up next year, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, 15 years, 20 years, and then you come up with a conclusion. Now, this is a typical cohort study, but this is known as prospective cohort. And this was longitudinal in nature. So we need to also understand cross-sectional versus longitudinal. So cross-sectional design actually means what is happening at one point in time. But longitudinal study is what is happening at multiple points in time. So remember, in cohort study, we look at what is happening at multiple points in time. What happened next year, then after next year, then after next year, maybe five years down the line, maybe 10 years down the line, at multiple intervals. We keep looking at the population that was at high risk of certain chemical or something, and we keep looking at them next year, maybe then following year, then after five years at regular intervals. So this is called as longitudinal study. So cohort study prospective is a longitudinal study. So remember that. Now cohort studies, of course, can be of two types, prospective cohort and retrospective cohort. I know, don't worry about it. I know many people would be saying that 
what is he talking about? He hasn't mentioned about retrospective cohort. Yes, there, there are two kinds of studies. So don't worry about it. I'm coming to that now. In prospective cohort study, you go into the future. But in retrospective study, you go into the past. And how do you go into the past? You look at the clinical records, medical records, electronic medical records, history, and you talk to people. And that's how you go into the past and find out the risk factor. Remember, the risk has already been done and disease has already been done in retrospective cohort. In prospective cohort, the disease has not happened yet. You know the risk factor, but you don't know the disease. And disease hasn't ha happened yet. Disease will happen later. But in retrospective cohort, the disease has already happened, but you don't know. The disease has already happened, but you don't know if the disease has happened or not. You just know about the risk factor. You go and check the risk factor, and then you follow that population and you find out whether they develop any disease or not. So remember, retrospective study is cheaper, easier and cheaper to do, while prospective cohort is expensive to do, difficult to do. And there are many other complications, like for example, you cannot keep track of all the patients and some patients, some people, they may die in between, they may drop out, they may move to another location. So you may not be able to complete your cohort study properly. So there will be so many confounding factors. So that's why retrospective cohort is easier to do and it is cheaper and faster with less confounding. And that's how you can, you can decide what kind of study design you would like to choose. So this is what cohort study is all about. And remember, yes, we do calculate relative risk and odds ratio. Yes, we do. And uh, now let's let's revise a little bit. So cohort studies are observational studies, but they are longitudinal in nature. That means you will look at the population in the future at multiple points in time. That's why it's longitudinal. And you will have two groups of cohort and cohort is a population with similar characteristics and you will follow them up for future one year down the line, two years, three years, four years, maybe 15 years, maybe 20 years, up to 50, 60 years, there is no limit. It can go into future that long, like Firmingham heart study I mentioned, and there are other studies as well. So the study can be that long, yes, and that is a longitudinal study, and you study the risk factor that if this risk factor can develop certain disease, and then you will find out, okay, oh, wow, this new disease is developed because of this chemical or because of this problem. So you knew the risk factor, but you did not know the disease. Now, the retrospective study is retrospective cohort is another kind of cohort because this one it was the prospective cohort in which you go into the future is a prospective cohort in retrospective cohort you go into the past now i think i have answered the question what is a cohort study now you can re-watch this video and keep watching and keep learning we'll meet again thank you <laughs>